We have three news literacy modules up and running right now. Uh, two come from the museum. Uh, they're uh, based on two games that are at the museum. One is the Be a Reporter game, and the other is just launched last year, a Be an Editor game. And we have a module that we launched with at the very start uh, called News Sense, the Building Blocks of News, which is an introduction of, of, of to the concepts of the five W's. Um, and that was put together by Mary Ann Hogan, a, a news writing coach. Um, so those are up and running, and we've seen great adoption of those modules by the university and by the high school teachers that we have. What we're most proud of is the official unveiling and announcement of our latest news literacy effort um, that I'm going to ask Marcy to talk about, which is watching TV news, how to be a smarter viewer. I came up to Stony Brook last year to meet with Howie after he had come down to Pointer uh, to talk about news literacy. This is almost 18 months ago and what was going on here. And it was clear to us that there was a great potential audience that uh, we could help um, serve uh, with the kinds of things that were being taught in the classroom. And so we partnered with Stony Brook uh, and we partnered with Marcy to uh, create a segment from their uh, class work which is about how to, how to deconstruct and understand the elements that make up TV news. And um, just one screenshot out of, a, out, of, out of the course which is about takes about two hours, two, two and a half hours, depending on how diligent you are. If you remember yesterday, how we showed the uh, news neighborhood as a worksheet that you can use in the classroom. Well, here's the news neighborhood that you actually can do uh, in the, um, uh, on the computer, and it's an interactive drag and drop, so you have to place the elements that work. And you can see the general categories of the news neighborhood and what makes TV news different. These are the major four sections of the course, and we're gonna briefly show you one of the segments, which is the deconstruction of television news report. So I'm gonna launch, and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Marcy. Okay. This is like, like TV, right? Okay, I'll just, uh, I'll talk while you're launching. Uh, as Howie mentioned yesterday, this course, the news literacy course at Stony Brook is uh, you know, a semester long, and we show video throughout uh, every class, or almost every class, but I come in at about mid midterm, and for two weeks, uh, I talk about how news consumers can watch television news and how it's different. It's very, it's different than uh, the way you consume print or even online. And so uh, what we did was we took this, what I do basically in those two weeks, and brought it here to News U. And it's a, an extremely robust site. There's lots of examples of uh, what I'm teaching the students through this course. And there are, um, lo there's lots of inter interactivity. For the, uh, for the person who's taking the course. So I'll just give you one quick example. As you remember, if you remember yesterday. Okay, if you would uh, point your laser to verification, assertion, sources, evidence, right? Point the, uh, yeah evidence, transparency, you'll see all of this, the, those things that we talked about yesterday and what we're trying to teach the students. And so what I do here is we, we in this particular segment, we play a story, in this case it was a CBS uh, investigative story on FEMA trailers, and we play it straight through and then it skips to analysis and it plays through again and if you'll see, the bar stops, it pauses, when it hits one of these key uh, deconstruction items like verification, So, it stopped here, it stopped on the green bar that says assertion, and a little, uh, you know, person that looks like me pops up and says the phrase unregulated experiment is judgmental language and goes on to explain a little bit because one of the things we talk about is for the viewer to be aware of judgmental language. So, this is how this particular segment works. You keep going and you'll see the next, uh, you'll see an example of, yeah, there's one. And in this case, we're sh saying that the company is asserting that they met or exceeded industry standards, but there was no 
uh, documents or other evidence to actually verify it. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting course. It's a very robust course. It's a very interactive course. And I would encourage you uh, to tell your friends and uh, you yourselves to please take the course. Uh, it is going online very, very, now. very shortly. He keeps saying now. I keep wanting to tweak it. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a great tool. It's a way uh, we talked yesterday about make, hitting scale. Uh, it is a great way to hit, you know, to get to uh, hundreds of thousands of people rather than just, you know, the students that we have in our classrooms. One of the things that we've always done at NewsU is kept it open to the general public. We have about 5% of our population that is sort of general or other in nature. And we're starting to look at how we can track people who just want to understand the news and how they'll come to us uh, as we market and promote these kinds of things to help them to be smarter consumers about, about things like news. Okay. Uh, I have two more things. Uh, what's next for us is we are going to work on a number of other kinds of modules. We do really believe in the partnership, so we're open to ideas of how we can take our expertise. Uh, we are going to also, uh, we're starting a project called News U International, which I'll talk about more uh, if you're interested outside of our 10 minutes, of which I have exactly <laughs> five seconds to <laughs> leave you with this thought, that learning is no longer preparation for the job, it is the job, and you can substitute classroom for a job in that case. With that, come join us. Okay, and there's the website, and we're ready for some questions.